How are you doing? This is my very first time going live by myself. I don't know if I'm live. Am I live? Happy World Card Making Day! Yay! So I just need to pull up real quick. I need to find, um, I need to pull up another window so I can see what's going on Facebook so I can try to read your messages. So let me just get to here. All right. Woohoo! I can't believe we did it. Thanks, Jen. Wow, guys, this is the first time we've been live. I've been live without Matt doing all the behind the scenes stuff. Jen is running the live in England while I am in the US. Matt's not here today. He is, he won a golf tournament, if that makes sense. So throughout the year, all of his golf tournaments that he played in, he they took all the scores, added them all up, and he won uh, a free weekend of another golf tournament. So when I told him, don't forget, we have a live tomorrow, he was like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, dude. And, you know, I'm not doing it by myself because this was, like, really complicated. But uh, Jen said, nope, nope, you go to your, um, your golf tournament and we will hand it over. Yay. Thank you, Jen. Sorry it took us so long, guys, but um, it ended up being okay. <laughs> so, if somebody just wants to tell me, hi, hello, how you doing, Nicole? And how's everything going? We have um, 10 people, I think. Yep, 10 people. So, I have Jen up. She's going to message me if there's something... Um, that I need to pay attention to. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Alexandria. Yes, congratulations to Matt. And you know what? Even though it's at the place he always plays golf, like he pays a membership to be there. And he's like, yeah, but it's free. And I'm like, okay, but it's still at your golf course, right? Yeah. That you can go to every day for free? Yes. <laughs> I'm like, okay, congratulations. Good job, buddy. <laughs> so he, he, he was set free for the day. <laughs> So, yes, we did it. Oh, thank God Jen was like, we can do this, Nicole. Don't freak out. I'm like, breathe. Don't cry. All right, guys. So, thanks for being here. Happy World Card Making Day. Woohoo! So, last year, oh, by the way, my name is Nicole Peterson. I'm the owner, designer, custodian at Pick a Fence Studios. Um, I live in South Louisiana and am married to Matt Peterson. Um, we own Pick a Fence Studios, and today, with it being World Card Making Day, we wanted to do something really fun that was different than um, normal things that we do. So this is your third live event with us, your third free live event with us. And I even made a, um, a bundle of the three stamp sets that have been used in the past two lives and the one I'm using here, and then... Um, gave you a certain percentage off of that. So if you want to go, there is a button um, on our main page of our website, which is pfstamps.com, and it says World Card Making Bundle. And in there, you'll see that you can purchase the three stamps at a reduced price. And if you have a coupon code from um, your previous purchases, of like some of y'all have a $10, you earned a $10 coupon, you can uh, even use that coupon towards that World Card Making Day bundle. 
so it's even cheaper, right? So what we also wanted to um, do today with using older products. Now, some of the products I'm going to be using the mixed media stuff are newer, meaning they came out in the last six months. But all three of the stamp sets that we're featuring are at least two years old. And I don't consider that old, okay? To me, if it's five years, <laughs> ten years, that's an older stamp set. But if you can still buy it on our website, I don't consider that old. So we wanted to see if we could, we wanted to do this for you guys because we know a lot of you have purchased these three stamp sets. So we wanted to offer you something that you could um, go find in your stash if you didn't have these stamps. I mean, if you, if you do have these stamps, you could go find them in your stash and um, then use the product that you have to make a card. So, and we're going to be using, it's going to be very mixed media. I'm going to be doing some things with the gel press. I have um, watercolored a whole bunch of things and did a lot of step out. So we're going to go ahead and jump in. Let me show you how to put the card together. I have the card. It's not all put together because I wanted to show you how I made the pieces of the card while we progress. Okay, so let me show you what the card is going to look like when I put it together. Okay, so I'm going to be teaching you how to make all these fun little panels. Okay, so here's our card panel that's finished, and I'm going to be teaching you how to, to make this, this front. Then I'm going to show you how to make this. This was used with velvet, the new, where am I off the screen, the, the new velvet right here, plus some sparkle on top with a new die. So we're, we're going to be, I'm going to show you how, how, to, how I made the finish on this. Then I'm going to show you this actually right here is a piece that we did on a live that we did previously on a live when I was showing you guys the white Lux. So I grabbed it and I wanted to show you that we're going to have Lux velvet and paper glaze all together on one card so you can really truly see the differences. Hi guys. Then we're going to use, so here's your three little gnome Santa Claus. This is what they look like when they're stamped. I did stamp them in, um, I'm gonna show you what I did, uh, in um, gray VersaClair, Vers so, yes, VersaFine Claire. I wanted a dark gray instead of black, so it would kind of blend in. So I did stamp them, I watercolored them, and then cut them out. This does not have a die to it. This is an older set. This when I, I this might be three years old, four. This might even be our first Christmas. So we weren't doing dies then. So here and then he's going. They're going to sit on our card like so, and then we're going to make this sentiment using our Jingle Bells glitz, paper glitz. Hold on. What's the matter? Okay. Sorry. And then the dogs are going to bark. So then this is going to go right here. Okay. So that's our goal. And I'm going to be teaching you how to use um, it, so it was from 2020. I don't know, Sarah. I, I don't know. I really don't know what year it was from. Anyway, so this is our goal. This is the card that we're going to make. But I'm going to show you how I made all of these different pieces using our mixed media products. Okay? It's going to be fun, guys. And I'm going to show you some things on gel press. And I made some new discoveries. So this is our goal, to end up with this. Okay, so I'm going to put that over there and show you. First thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp. Let me just show you. These are three other little Santa Clauses that I did. I did color them in more traditional Christmas colors so you could see how cute they are in um, a normal palette instead of the turquoise pink and uh, dark mint that I did. So you can use this, this snowman alone, or even in a more traditional palette. 
All right, so let me put all this to the side. Now I have this already set up. I have a feeling I need to move this up. So like I said, Matt's not here. He's usually the one telling me I need to move in or move out. Okay, so on my Misty, I have this image right here. This is called Baby It's Cold Outside. And it comes with this large image with three, you want to call them snowmen, you want to call them gnomes, snow gnomes, whatever you want to call them. Then it comes with four sentiments. Baby, it's cold outside. Hello, winter. Merry Christmas. And family is the best part of Christmas. Oh, we got smoke going on. Okay. Hopefully there's no fire where that smoke came from. So we have four sentiments and then the large um, three uh, no's. All right. Yes. Something just um, popped in one of the lights and smoke came out. Matt's not here, so go figure. All right. So I have already, this is um, Bristol Smooth. So here is what I'm using first, the Bristol Smooth, the Strathmore Bristol Smooth. This is what I usually go to for any kind of mixed media. All right, Strathmore Bristol Smooth. And I have a piece of it in here already. And next thing I'm going to do, and I have my snowmen down here. Now, I want to show you something. Do you see my sticky mat? I use it differently than what Charlene did. Charlene um, has had used her, she put it in her Misty and then she took it out and removed her card front. I actually keep this in my Misty at all times. All of my Misties all have their own little mats. And I like it because I wanted to hold my card down. And I even have it taped, if you see right here, because I really, really, really don't like things to, to shift when I'm stamping. So, and I still even use my magnet. So, I'm a little um, obsessed with that, right? Okay. Now, <laughs> I'm going to use the Morning Mist um, Versa, Cla Versa Fine Claire to ink up my stamp. And I am going to give this a double stamp. If you wanted to, of course, you could stop at one. However, I wanted it to be a little bit darker. So that's one cool thing about ink. You can stamp once and then if you like. So it's actually perfect as is if I wanted to keep it like this. But I wanted it to be a little darker. So I'm going to go ahead and ink it up again. So I get it a little bit darker. All right. So I'm inking it up. This is why... I have the Misty mat inside my Misty, the sticky mat, so I can just open and close my Misty, and I don't have to freak out or worry about if my paper is shifting, right? Okay, now a new product that we're doing a collab soon with Marker Forte, and they sent me this um, ink pad. They sent it to me for free, um, heat embossing uh, ink pad. So I've been playing with it now. I don't clean my stamps between stamping and inking with a heat embossing sticky ink. So this is what all, this is brand new, I opened it this morning. So this is what all of my embossing pads look like, okay? It does not, it doesn't affect the ink at all. It All of them look like this because I'm too lazy to clean my stamps between regular ink and embossing ink. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Sorry. And I'm going to give it a push. You always want to make sure, guys, that your, your embossing ink pad. I don't really find there's too much difference between them as far as performance. You want to know what the difference is? How much ink is in the pad. That, to me, is the difference. And I do find this one is pretty heavy. So you can actually feel that it has quite a bit of ink inside of it. So the most important thing when you're embossing is to know if you can push hard. If it's a fine detail stamp, do not push hard. You barely have to touch it to get the ink, the sticky ink to touch the paper. But if it's something like this where it has a lot of, you know, it's a larger stamp, then you could press pretty hard. But when it comes to embossing ink, they're pretty much all the same. 
but you got to make sure your pad is juicy. If you have a weak pad or you've been using it a while, and you know, this has um, water in it also, so it's going to evaporate also depending on where you live in the States. So from here, I'm going to take... clear embossing powder. Okay, so I'm done with this. Now I always keep, I keep the paid, the little plastic that came with the, the mat. I'm just going to close this up and I'm going to clean it later. I'm going to put that to the side. And then here you're going to see that this is a, I bought this container, um, I think from I don't know, Amazon probably. And what I'm going to do is I'm just, this is wow, super fine embossing powder. And this way I just, I always have it in this little container. Sorry. I always have it in this little container and it just sits, I have one in my video room and one in my studio. So from here, we would take this and we would heat set it. However, I've already done that. So I've already heat set one. So this I'm going to put to the side and save for another time because I've already done the heat embossing. So we're going to look at this one. And I'm not even going to color this with you guys because I already have one colored. But I want to show you how I cut them out. Okay. So I'm going to quickly grab a pair of scissors. Let's see. Okay. So I did fussy cut this. Now, whenever you're fussy cutting, the general rule is to keep your scissors in one spot and you want to move the paper. So the trick to easy fussy cutting is to take the paper and you're rotating the paper as you cut, okay? You're not really moving this other hand um, too much. That's your right hand. I taught elementary kids how to cut paper for a very long time. I had to use scissors. So this is how you get more of a cleaner cut. And I'm just going to quickly go around. And if you notice, what I'm moving is the paper, right? And by moving the paper, you will get a better cut. Now, when it comes to this type of image, when it comes to fussy cutting, you also don't want to make everything like perfectly straight or do a lot of right angles. You don't want any points, okay? Now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in here and get rid of a lot of that. That is just annoying me and it's making my it harder for me to cut. So I got rid of it and now look what happens. My scissors can now fit into that spot where before the paper was blocking it and I couldn't get my scissors in that spot. And I see people do this a lot where they fight with paper. Um, I taught classes all over the US at large conventions for 10 years. So I got to watch a lot of people, you know, their techniques and things like this. And, you know, I got to watch them struggle with their paper and think, wow, if you just like cut, got rid of that little, that little part right there then you would have a lot less trouble fussy cutting this, right? And I'm going to do it again because the top of this one is going to... You just got to make sure you do it carefully because if you're not paying attention, yes, definitely want to get rid of that bulk. So right in here, I'm going to come... Maybe I should do it where you guys can see. Was I hiding it before? So I'm going to come in here and when I am moving the paper, okay, I don't want to come in here and you need to be careful not to make any right angles, okay? So when I come right through here, this is like a little bubbly, a little bumpy area. So with my scissors, I'm, I'm just moving my scissors back and forth a tad so that way we can, you can um, leave a little irregular cut, if you will instead of it being like a straight, perfect cut, you can come in and make it like, jag not jagged, just like bumpy. That's, you know, where it's not a straight, perfect little cut. You can come in right here if you want, and you can take this and even go back and just cut off a few of the tiny little pieces 
to like this arm. See how straight this arm is? It's really not meant to be like that. So I'm just going to come in and almost like cut like a little tiny little chunk off just to make it look a little bit more um, realistic. Now you see the top right here of this guy has a little right angle on him. So I'm just going to come and trim off that little piece. All right, so now let's get back. I know I'm sitting here teaching you how to fussy cut, but fussy cutting is a skill. And a lot of people say they don't like it when I actually enjoy fussy cutting. Okay, I don't want to fussy cut 15 million things, and I do always want to have my dies. But if I don't have a die for a stamp set, I'm not going to let that stop me from doing what I want to do. Yeah, your nose is usually, yeah. Well, it's, this is a little bit harder to cut live than um, when I'm normally at my desk. Because you're right, normally I would have it real close to my face or in, basically I'm sit, sitting in my lap. So when I come around here, I'm just going to move my paper. And I don't want this little pom-pom to be perfect. So I'm purposely not cutting it into a perfect little circle because that's not the style of these gnomes or these snowmen. So um, when I come down here... And I'm not going to lie, these are not my favorite scissors, but they're sitting on this desk in my video room, so that's what I grabbed. I do like the Cutter B ones, the ones that are yellow and black. Um, I, you know, I've tried other brands, but I always go back to Cutter B's. Um, I think it's just because it's what works for my hands. It's not necessarily the scissors or anything like that. I just think that when it comes to using something like a pair of scissors. It all depends on what works in your hand. All right, so now I'm gonna come back over here. And if you look what I did here, I cut and I left some snow until I got right underneath the snowman. Then I just kind of, I didn't cut off the snow. I left it, I left them attached basically. And then I came in here and I cut close to their bottom and then came down and trimmed close, but not quite. So right here, most pe some people would just take this and chop that off. You really don't. You want that to be rounded. You want just a little rounding right there. Now I'm going to come back and look at this one. See how this is like, it got a point. I'm going to come back and I'm going to round that point. Just that tiny little bit makes a big difference. And then you'll have snowmen that look much more realistic than um, if you just took them and just chopped them up and had all kind of little bright angles and stuff to it, right? Okay, however, I'm gonna be doing a lot of mixed media with you guys today. So I already went ahead and colored um, my, so this, I'm gonna put them to the side, but I did wanna show you, you don't have to color them in the colors that I did. I went a little wild. So the first set I colored, I, I wanted this these three colors with blue, pink, and like a mint green. However, this was my first version, and they ended up being, you know, much more realistic looking, I guess, if you want to call them gnomes, right? However, then I decided I wanted to do it again. So this way, look, I left all this white, and I went like really funky, if you will, with the snowmen. So totally different looks. So you can see the difference between them. So much more of a typical water painting here. And then here, I decided I was going to leave them funky and fun and very, um, I would say actually organic, very artsy. So, you know, it just depends. So again, now I have three more to put on another card. So we have this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start moving on. I'm going to put this back in my little spot and I want to show you guys how I made this piece of paper okay can y'all see that this piece of paper is covered with what I call snow okay this it's not really snow obviously this is why we came out with the paper glaze velvet do y'all see that crazy texture 
Okay, let me show you. So, and I was able to cut out trees and look, they still have that crazy texture to them, even though they went through a die cut machine. Okay, they still have that texture. Let me show you what I did. So, and we're about to do this. So, to, to get my velvet to look like snow that landed on a piece of paper, I used a gel press. So while I had the gel press out, because you know, if you gotta take it out, it's kind of like taking out your um, your big pot of for you know for cooking or boiling crawfish. You're not gonna boil just one bag, right? You're gonna boil more than. And I ended up making all of these different coils with my gel press while I had it out. Okay, so we actually are going to do this right now. I can't guarantee they're all going to look the same. So this right here, this is the exact same as this. Oh no, I'm sorry. This is, sorry. This right here is the same as this, except I use black paper. So this is the snow technique, the velvet, um, what is it? Uh, winter snowfall on a brayer. This is it on black and this is it on white. So you can see the difference just from using um, different paper. And then this is something that, that we did together on a live that I pulled out. This is actually a stencil, but it is meant, it's called Slimline Ocean Stencil and it is at 25% off. And what I did here is instead of trying to make water, I actually used it to make, I used it with the White Lux. Okay, and White Lux is a very thick glitter, paste it's not a, it's not like glitz glitz is self leveling and glitz is going to give you a smooth um finish hold on lux and look i brought these two cards out to show you lux is thick and it's going to hold its shape okay so you can see <coughs> excuse me depending on how much lux you put, that's the shape it's gonna hold. So I wanted to show you this. This is lux on this gingerbread house, okay? Do you see how it, it's very, very thick? This is lux. It, it holds its shape and it allows you <clears throat> to build it up, okay? And that's what I wanted it for. I wanted something that would hold its shape. You could use it thicker right? You can use it thicker. And then here is another one. Here, I um, used a less of the Lux, okay? And then I went back on top of it and colored it with sparkle, okay? But this is a great example to show you the difference between Lux and paper glitz, because to me, that's the two different ones. Okay, now let's look at this word greeting. Okay, this word greeting was made, let me put it in my hand. I made this with paper glitz, okay? It's flat, okay? It, it is puffier than what you would say, um, like Rangers, uh, their drops, stickles. It, it is puffier than stickles. However, it self levels when you use it, okay? So it gives you like this, the most beautiful, shiny, glittery colors. It has depth and dimension to it because there's 15, some of them have 19 different shades of glitter. Where when you have Lux, okay, it's not going to self level. It's going to stay where you put it and it's super thick. I just let it dry. Um, you don't really need, so all of our products dry really fast, Yolanda. And honestly, if just, if you're using a ceiling fan while you're um, working on your products, you'll be amazed how fast they actually dry. And I live in a very wet, humid um, environment. So here's this card also. I didn't, this, I was supposed to do a live with this one. I don't know, whenever ago, and then I got sick. So, so these are the two versions that I made. So here you can see this is Lux. Here you can see this is, um, uh, it's a little Lux and then I went back on top of it and used some sparkle. So I will, if you like, try to do a live on this card. It took forever, but okay. So that's what I wanted to show you. Now, <clears throat> let's go ahead. So if you have this stencil, 
for the ocean, then that's what I use to make my snow scene. Okay, so let me put this to the side. Let me get some stuff out the way. And then I will show you. So this also, if you look right here, this is what I used to die cut the greeting. So glit is, it's gonna, um, however thick you apply it is the thickness it's going to be. But it self levels, you see how, and here's another sample. This was in my drawer, I'm not joking. I really keep all these little pieces. So when I need to die cut something, it just, it I already have it sampled. So you can see, I didn't flatten this or anything. And you see how super shiny and depth that is. You're never gonna see glitter paper like this. And then this is called Silver Bells, okay? The silver, this is what it looks like, and it's called Silver Bells. So that's what I use to cut out my word greeting. Okay, then we're also going to make this piece of paper right now. This and this, same thing. Only difference, I did one on white and one on black, okay? Here, the same exact thing. Well, this is the snow. So these three are the same exact thing, okay? Just the white velvet. Here, it's on black. Here, it's on white. And here, it's on navy blue. But all three of them are the same exact. But look at the difference you get just from changing the piece of paper. All right. Then after that, I wanted to see what would happen if I added some paper glaze regular paper glaze and this is the color that's called huckleberry okay so and then we'll move on all right so this is going to go fast i know a lot of people think gel press takes a while it does not um actually at least for me it doesn't i get super excited about it and then just want to keep doing pull after pull pull one after another all right so grab my gel plate now my gel plate I already used um, some of the paper glaze velvet today. So I did not go and clean off my gel plate. So let's talk about why Picket Fit Studios products work so well on a gel plate. And that's because they all, all the products dry with tooth, okay? Now, when I was taking art lessons, my teacher did not do a very good job of explaining the word tooth, T-O-O-T-H. What tooth means, tooth is nothing but a way to describe paper that is textured, okay? If something has tooth to it, it means it is not smooth. So the Bristol, Smack Strathmore Bristol paper is, not, is, is a smooth paper. It has zero tooth to it, okay? But if you come over here and I grabbed the Strathmore mixed media paper, this black piece of paper, it says that it has um, a vellum finish, yes. However, it doesn't. It actually still has texture to it, so it has tooth. So whenever you're using a piece of textured cardstock, that cardstock has tooth to it. It has texture. When you stamp something, you're going to get your very best results on paper that does not have tooth. However, when you're working with some mixed media products, um, you can still use paper that doesn't have tooth to it if you're using a, a paste or a mixed media product that has tooth. Get it? So if you yeah, have one one or the other has to have some tooth to it, some texture. So we're going to be using paper with very little to zero tooth, but it's okay because our paper glaze, glitz, velvet, all of them have tooth. They have texture to them. So you might say, well, Nicole, this is not going to come off your gel press. Oh, yes, it is. It is. And I, you know what? I'm not, I don't love my gel press. And, like I love it, but I don't baby it because it's a tool. Just like anything else, you know, it, it should be used and it might even get a little damaged. I'm not going to try to hurt it, but it's okay if you do end up accidentally one day messing up your gel press. So the very first thing we're going to do is we have, so I want you to look at these three different whites, okay, that we have. So this is regular paper glaze, this is Lux, and this is Velvet. Regular paper glaze dries slick 
pearlescent and you can um, make it'll hold its shape. Okay. Lux dries glittery, very shimmery, holds its shape. Velvet dries matte, very, very, very matte. Okay. Matte finish with a, it's not a pearlescent finish. It's a shimmery finish. Okay. So it's matte and shimmery. That's the difference. They all have their purposes, right? Now, what I did is earlier, I have my velvet and what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape some of this out because I'm what we're doing now is we're making the snow paper. Okay. We're making this, this paper right here, just the snow. So I'm taking the paper glaze velvet and I'm going to spread it on my plate. Now I'm just, ooh, that was a lot. I am spreading it around, but then I'm going to come back and it's okay that I'm putting it on top of this dry velvet because in a little while I'm going to show you a technique of you can actually clean your, um, your gel press and get pulls from just cleaning it, okay? So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna put this to the side and I'm gonna grab a brayer. Now nobody squeal, okay guys, when you see me getting my brayer dirty. I'm sorry, but this, you know, it's a tool and it's okay if it gets dirty, I'll just wash it after. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come and I'm going to move this velvet to go all the way around on my gel plate. Now this is thick, okay? This is not like brayering paint. I'm not going to roll this off onto a piece of paper like you would if it was paint because I want this to have as much on here as possible. And as you see, you see these little blotchy areas? I'm actually gonna come in here and put more on top of this. Now. Let's say you're almost running out of velvet. It's, your velvet's getting low, okay? If you have paper glaze enhancer, this only works with the whites. But if you have paper glaze enhancer, you can actually mix some of this with your paper glaze velvet winter snowfall, and it'll make it like, you know, you can add a little bit of this enhancer just to the white though, not the other colors. And that's what I had to do earlier today because um, I uh, only had half a jar when I started. So I had to add. Okay, so I'm going in and adding. Now this is starting to dry. All of you that were asking me how fast it dries, it's already starting to dry. So I need to stop running my mouth and get busy with it. Okay. Now I'm going to be using, since you already saw it on the white, I'm going to do a, a black page, okay? Ooh, my last one. All right, so black. This And this is a very thick mixed media paper. So it can take more abuse. All right, I'm gonna put it down and then I'm gonna take another brayer, okay? And I'm going to brayer and it's okay if it picks up a little bit of the velvet and puts it on the back, it's okay. We're, we're not going to, to cry over it, it's gonna be just fine. We just wanna make sure we brayer this. All right, and I usually just pass my hands on to. So we're going to see, it might pull up some of the, um, the velvet that was still stuck to my bright, to my gel press, or it might not. We'll see. And if it does, cool. If not, okay. So this is what it looks like. So here's my snowfall on top of black paper. Now, if I wanted to, I could take this and put it back and get another if I wanted to add more texture. But it's, I love it. Look how beautiful that is. I mean, it looks just like a blizzard, right? So this is done. I'm putting this to the side to dry. So you go over there. And if you notice, look, look how much of this I have left. So what I'm going to do is I want to add, I'm going to do my second paper now. So what I just did there is exactly what I did to this white. Okay, except I did it on black. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make this paper. And this is the paper that we're going to be using for the backdrop, okay? 
for the backdrop of our card. Now, what I did here is this is already velvet and I've grabbed Lux, okay? And this is the paper Lux called Spanish Moss. And so this is going to be thicker and it's gonna be super shiny. And I did not clean my jar off well this morning. So I'm going to take some of this and I'm just going to pat it around. Okay, because I don't want to hide the white. And I'm not going to mix it up because if I mix it up, I'm going to create a new color. I don't want that to happen. Okay, all I want to do is try is tr get a, a um, kind of like an ombre effect, if you will. It's not really ombre. It's really a messy look between the white velvet and the turquoise jewelry looks. Okay, so I'm going to come in. And I am, I, you do have to brayer it out a little bit, right? But I don't want to brayer it out so much that you're creating a new color. I think I am going to come back and add a little bit more. Um, this is the velvet because the so velvet dries matte, right? Lux, which is the blue, is going to give us a very shimmery glitter look. So I'm just adding a little bit more. Let me go back over it. I'm not trying to blend it. Okay. Just trying to get it to move. Okay. Now I've got a piece of Bristol. And I do like using Bristol because their paper is um, 9 by 12. So it's a larger piece of paper. Now this time I'm going to push harder than I did before. Now, sometimes it depends on what you're working with, but sometimes on a gel plate, you don't want to push hard because <laughs> if you got something like real watery underneath, you're just going to squirt yourself. And we don't want to do that. We're going to be messy enough. We don't want to help it out, right? You can even go diagonal a few ways. All right, so let's see what that's going to... So this is our background paper. It should look like this, hopefully. And guys, let me tell you something. Every pull always looks different, okay? So I'm looking at this pull. All right, it's got a lot of blue areas. So what I think I'm gonna do real quick, I think I'm gonna come in here and do a little bit more blending on what's left. And then I'm gonna take, cause I don't want it to be this blue, it's beautiful. Okay, but I really was going for less of a blue. Did y'all see it? This is what, it, see how it's like blue splotchy? So let's, let's try that again. I do find that every single time I do gel press, it's impossible. It's like alcohol ink. It's almost impossible to get the same exact, exact finish. I mean, I did this other page yesterday. Okay, so this one's a little bit better. I think what I'm going to do though the areas that are really blue. There we go. Let's see. So, okay. So it's beautiful. When it dries, it dries lighter with a lighter finish. Awesome. So that's how I got the background. Now, I have this all over my gel plate. What are we going to do? Oh, throw all this away. Oh no. What we're going to do now is we're going to grab some paper glaze. Now this is Huckleberry Blue, which is one of our newest colors. Okay. And what we're going to do with Huckleberry Blue is we're going to take it and we're going to spread it all over. Sorry guys. My table's on wheels. So sometimes when I get excited, I, uh, <laughs> accidentally push on those wheels. So I'm going to come in here and I want to do this before it dries. And I'm just spreading paper glaze. This is paper glaze. This is Huckleberry Blue. Huckleberry Blue to me is the perfect, it's not royal blue. It's not navy blue. It's a perfect in between navy and royal. If, you know, you want to call it that. All right, so I didn't use my brayer this time because I really did not want to mix the colors. I want to keep it nice and dark. So let me grab a piece of paper. 
And I'm going to be using Strathmore Bristol Smooth the, in white. This time, I'm going to put it down. And this, I do this, and then I keep all of these, okay, obviously. And sometimes y'all will ask me, Nicole, how'd you make that paper? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that was just something I had in my in my drawer. You know, I didn't necessarily um, have a plan for it. It just kind of happened. And that's what happens with the gel plates. If you have to make five samples of something and you want them to all look alike, you better do all five of them at one time. Don't say you're going to come back tomorrow and remember exactly what you did because you won't. You ready? So this is pulling and it's pulling up some of the white that was underneath it. So you see like right in here, do you see how now there's empty spots on my gel plate? Look, you see those empty spots? Because it went all this, this glaze went all the way down to the very bottom or the, the top of the gel plates. So actually, I think I want to do this one more time. Let's rotate it. Sometimes I find just rotating it because I want it a little bit more. See, I like to call what's left on the plate like crusties, okay? Um, to me, the crusties are the pieces that are like, look, see how, look how ugly. See all these crusties on the edge right here? of my gel plate those are the favorite my favorite parts because that really gives you your paper a lot of character and makes it special so let's see oh yeah pulled up even more so if you see i put that the huckleberry blue on top of the velvet the the velvet actually so right here you can see this is the glaze and it's going to dry slick okay this is my favorite part this is why we have different this is going to dry slick, very glossy and slick. So is it here and all right here. Okay. But then I'm going to have this white showing through that's matte. You see that? That's going to be very, very matte finish. But then I'm going to have the slickness. See that? Look right there. The slickness of the paper glaze. Okay. Absolutely love doing this. Okay. So let's see if we can get more of this off. Let's see what we can do. But you know what? Let me grab a piece of color for this off. Instead, it doesn't always have to be white or black. You can grab colored cardstock. I'm going to grab this navy blue. This navy blue. And let's see if I can get more of it to come off. At, at one point, this will dry, especially with our products, because we made them quick drying. Because I don't like to wait. <clears throat> oh yeah and guys alcohol ink whoo i could show you some things with alcohol ink on a gel press i can actually use alcohol ink on top of any of our paper um glaze products okay so let's see what's gonna happen if it's still wet or not. okay so it gave me some it pulled some off it's good for like a, if you didn't want so much of a background. But what's happened is this has dried, okay? So now it's time to put another layer on it. But I'm talking a lot, so I'm gonna need to do it fast. So let's see, what, should, what layer should we put on top of it? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's try Sparkle. Okay, Sparkle. So this is Paper Glaze Sparkle. Paper Glaze Sparkle has to be mixed any, any of our um, glitz have to be mixed because there's so much glitter in here that it actually, the glitter, we can't keep it to stay together because there's so much glitter, it automatically falls to the bottom. All right, come on. My screen keeps not letting me see. That's a perfect description. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly spread this because we want it before it dries so that now we're adding um gl uh, paper glitz yeah and paper glitz is nothing but shimmery goodness let me add a little bit of blue since i have it on here already all right i am making a mess but it's okay 
I'll clean it up. And you know what, guys? I'm kind of making a mess here because I'm going fast. But when I do this, on, I do this on my desk. And I don't make a mess because when I do it on my desk, I take time. I don't rush around like this. So I'm just going to use a piece of white copy paper. Yes, copy paper. Now, you might say, Nicole, copy paper? Really? There is a copy paper by Hammer Mill. Hammer Mill. And it is thicker and has a, like kind of a glossier finish than regular copy paper. It's on Amazon. I'm making that Holly. It's Holly's on here. She can tell us the one that I'm using. All right, so let's see. See what it pulls up. It's pulling it up. But let me, I'm going to give it a little bit more. Put some muscle. That, and I know my hands are not, um, I'm going to end up having to have uh, physical therapy after I'm finally healed from my surgery because my hands are just so weak. All right, so let's see. Let's peel it up. Oh. All right, look at that. It's beautiful. Now, can I take this, after this is dry, can I go back and redo more on top of this? There you go, ham, hammer mill. Hammer, hammer mill, there you go. And you can even take this if you want and kind of dab it around. Dab it around. Smacking the baby. And pick up other parts of the gel press. So do you see? Ah, oh, that's pretty. All right. Normally I could do like 12 pulls within half an hour. All right, so let's see. Let's do a few more. Did I grab some black? Let's do black on top of this. Let's do black paint. We're gonna do just regular black paint because this is getting to be really thick because our products are very thick, but let's, let's a good way to save some money when you're using expensive, not expensive, but you know, mixed media products is to add a little bit of paint. I'm going to add some black paint. Now guys, you're going to want to put a bunch. Don't. Okay. Resist, resist the urge. Why does my fingers always have to get into the paint? All right. Resist the urge to not. I'm actually going to use this one. So this is one I didn't clean in the past. So I'm just going to come and I'm going to do pulls and put black paint. Black is my favorite color um, when it comes to any type of design work. And it definitely is going to show here because I make you bet that some of y'all are going to be like, oh, that's my favorite one. A little bit more paint. I noticed I, I picked up my, um, an expensive black paint today and it had gone bad. So I'm using my, the one I should not be, this is too expensive to use on your gel plate, by the way, this golden fluid acrylic, but I don't have any other black paint. The other one I had was bad. So I'm just, Make and do, baby. Make and do. All right. So I'm going to get this nice. And I know some people don't like to put this much paint on their gel press. They just, you know, like, oh, that's too much paint. You're being wasteful. You know what? It's my paint. I paid for it. I'm going to put as much as I want. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So let's see. Let's use another piece of copy paper. Um, you know what? I don't want to use copy paper this time. I'm going to use, I like the Bristol because it's the right size. My gel plate is nine by 12. So I like to use a nine by 12 piece of paper because it covers the whole plate. Now guys, if you, if you don't ever do anything larger than an A2 card front, just buy a small, gel press. I just like the big gel press because this keeps me from making such a mess. I find the larger the piece of paper, the more mess that I make. And if I'm going to pull out all this stuff and make a mess, darn it, we're, I'm going to play for a long time. 
I'm not just going to do one little call. All right, so let's see. So, oh yeah. So now the black paint is going to pull up the white velvet that we put down before. It's going to pull up the uh, huckleberry blue and it's going to pull up the sparkle. Okay. So you're going to see it. And at first you might be like, oh no. And I'm like, oh yes. Look at that gorgeousness. And you can see all right here. It might look like the paper tore. The paper did not tear. That right there, ladies, and if there are any gentlemen, that is the velvet. You see that? That's the velvet that was stuck on there when we first started this mess. Okay? Look how gorgeous. Okay, let me put that down. Now I've gotten where I have used all my surfaces. I just start filling up the, the ground. So let's see. Um... Do we have, let's see if we have any black left because you can always try to refresh. Let's see if we, I'm going to use copy paper to see if I can get another pull from it. Do you want to know how you clean your gel press? You use hand sanitizer. Bring it in your bathroom, in your bathtub, or if you have a utility room sink, you can bring it in your utility room and put it in there and then squirt hand sanitizer all over it and everything will come off. All right, let's see. So I've got a little bit of a pull, not much. So it it's too dry. So let's try putting some silver paint. I'm kind of excited that I couldn't find my paint <laughs> and that my black paint was bad because I'm going to go paint um, shopping this afternoon and buy online, not like actually in person. Yeah, regular hand sanitizer. You could use rubbing alcohol, but I'm going to be honest with you. The rubbing alcohol is too harsh for your gel plate. If you just use um, hand sanitizer and look I'm gonna come and I'm gonna scrape all this goodness that's over here hanging off my gel plates I'll put it on there and look I'm not an expert I'm an expert at messing around and making messes okay there are lots of different ways and I'm sure somebody's gonna see this video and go what in the world did that woman think she was doing oh give me a break and I'm okay with it they can think whatever they want so I'm coming back with a piece of copy paper again. And again, I don't usually get this messy. I'm this messy because I'm going fast. If I wasn't going this quickly, then I wouldn't be making such a mess. All right, let's see, baby. Oh. You can always tell when it's a good pull because right before you start taking it off, you can hear it peeling up. Oh, y'all are going to be, this is an awesome one. Ah! LOL. I have a PhD in messy crafting D. <laughs> Me too. Now this one tore the paper, but look, even with the paper torn, this is because I, it was drawing. Even with the torn paper, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. So you see the copy paper, it being thin, it does have a little bit of a um, tendency to tear. Okay, now I gotta get this off. All right, so you've got an idea of what you can do with your gel plate, right? And with some, there's a whole bunch more stuff we can do. But this gives you an idea of how to use some of our paper products. I mean, our mixed media. And look, I'm going to put this in the sink. It'll be just like this when I'm ready to clean. Uh, let me just put this down where a dog won't step on it. Yep, it, I put it down on the floor. All right. I don't know how many pulls that was. Usually I can do, when I take it out, I do a minimum of 12 pulls. 
I normally would not clean my desk, but I have to clean it or we won't be able to proceed. Let, oh, I must have left the, and you can use the hand sanitizer on your glass mat as well, as well as rubbing alcohol. I just need to wipe this off to get it to where it's, it doesn't have black to get all over everything. All right, you do want to clean your tools, though. I'm going to have to soak this one. All right, now, now you know how to make the snow, right? And a whole bunch of other things. Um, I'm just going to use my apron to dry. And I have my sparkle sitting here open. I'm, I'm just going to put the lid on it for now so it doesn't dry, but I need to go back and clean that lid. Okay, so let's get back to our card. I don't know how long we've been, but, um, you know, it's World Card Making Day. I had to show you guys a whole bunch of good stuff. All right, so now you understand how I made this, correct? So this was just the snow paper, the, the, um, the paper glazed velvet snowfall. And all I did was put it across the gel plate and pick it up with paper. We have a die cut that cuts these trees. But I want to show you something. Do you see how they're not even? These two are not the same. That's because I did not close. When I designed this die, I did not put a closing on the bottom. And what that does is that allows you, you decide how long your trees are going to be. OK, you can make it a whole entire piece of paper if you want, or you can make it short like I did this one. And I'm going to layer one behind the other just like this. And because um, Paper Glaze Lux has a lot of tooth to it, it, it adheres together very, very well, very well. So that's all I did is I could die cut two of them. I glued them two together like so. Okay. I glued them together, however way you want it, maybe a little bit on this side. And it's okay. Cause you're going to go back and trim this right. The top and the bottom. And I have a sample that I did. So this is what I did here and I've already trimmed it. Okay. But after I did this, I thought mm, it's so pretty, but it's a little bland. So I thought, let me take some, some sparkle, some paper glaze sparkle. And I just took a brush and all I did, I stirred my paper glaze sparkle up. And then I came here and I just added some to it. That's it. I just went and added. Now, if you'd like, you can water down your paper glaze sparkle, okay? And make it thinner to where it has like a thinner look. And that's just, you just add a little bit of water to your sparkle and use it like that. All right, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to wipe off the sparkle that I just put because, and it won't hurt anything, but I'm about to use this to make the card. I would prefer it not to be wet. Okay, so then I showed you guys how to make this paper, right? And I already put this on a card front, on a card base. This piece of paper that I'm using I had a little bit extra from our Mr. Frosty comes to town and limited kit that we have on sale right now. And I took a piece of paper out of that kit. And this is the paper that comes with that kit that perfectly matched the front of what I did with the, uh, on the gel plate. So now all I have to do is glue these two together. So let me get some glue. So now I have all these pieces done and I, I, I have all these papers done. So where next time I'm making a card like this, before I start messing around and deciding what my background is going to be, I literally go look through all of my drawers that have, that, well, they're not that many, the drawer that has all these scraps in it. Now, look, I don't save, I don't save regular paper scraps. If it's like a, it has to be more than like a, three by three size is about the largest that I save when it comes to regular paper. But when it comes to something like this that I made and put product on it, then I'm going to save pretty much every little scrap until I use it. And I already put this in my trimmer. So it already fits perfectly on this A2 card front. Just 
make sure I line it up properly. I'm hold it down for a second. And if you remember what I said, this has a lot of tooth to it, and so do, does this paper. Texture is perfect for Christmas cards. Yeah. Yo, yeah. The sparkle on top that you're. Oh my gosh, of course I get black on it. It's okay. <laughs> What's funny is basically the my card just became a gel press. Okay. All right. Then the next step is I have this right here. This is part of that the um the stencil that I showed you earlier that's supposed to be water. And all I did was fill it with white Lux and I cut it apart and I'm going to use it to make it look like there's more snow on the bottom. So I'm going to put a whole bunch of glue on the back. And I'm going to lay this. Now, I don't think I want, do I want the whole thing? Or do I want just parts? Hmm, I think I just want parts. No, I'm going to do the whole thing. So I'm just lining it up. Now, obviously, if I was not rushing for a live, I would have put this first layer in a book and allowed the book to hold it down and seal it, right? And I would do the, the same thing with this step. And I would put the book down and allow it to um, hold it down with the pressure of the book. Now, all I have to do is decide where am I going to put my beautiful little retired elves. <laughs> now, if I wanted to cut them apart, obviously I could. But I decided I'm just going to leave them together. And the last thing, so this was supposed to go right here. But since I have black paint, I'm going to let it come over here. Let's see. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just put sequence or a snowflake right there. So I think bad about doing mixed media cards is you do have to wait for the layers to dry. Um, and then I am going to add some sequence that are... Don't. So I still have this thing that I had out for the last live that I never cleaned back up. And I knew that I had the, um, um, what is this one called? Uh, candy, candied snow. I knew I still had that out. So after this is all glued down, I will come in and add some snowflakes. I don't think I'm going to do pink though, because you know, I don't want something to compete with all this background that I did. So I'm going to put like silver snowflakes and white snowflakes. I say I will, but I might just put them on. We'll see. Oh yeah. Do they look better on the tree? Did they look better on the ground? I'm not sure. Or do I just want to use some clear sequins? Just some clear. I'm putting some sequins. Don't worry. There will have sequins on here somewhere. We're going to cover that with something. Somewhere there will be sequins. Maybe clear and silver. Because I believe in sequins. <laughs> I believe in sequins, people. Right. Okay. So that is my card. I'm not going to, I can't put anything else down because I've got to wait for those. I need to go put those two layers between a book and let them stick before I can get everything else to perfectly line up. But I will take a picture of it. Oh, look, he's got a, I will take a picture and put it on our Facebook community and it'll be on the page with the snowflake I mean the trees the stencil all the mixed media products and also um, baby it's cold outside all right guys well does anyone have any questions I can't imagine how long we've been on here um, I do want to show you something 
I did receive two cards in the mail before y'all leave. Um, this card Holly sent me. Isn't that sweet? Look how pretty. And she used um, our new Lux products. And she just said, you know, wishing me well. Isn't that gorgeous? I thought that was so sweet of you, Holly. And then this one is from Terry Wilson. She loves my um, Face the Sun flower. She makes, she colors this flower every year. And she sent this to me also um, as a, you know, get better type of card. So I thought I wanted to show you guys these. Now, look, I love all cards from everyone. Does it make a difference? Is it more special when someone sends me a card that they use my products with? Um, yes. <laughs> I'm not going to lie and say no. Uh, because it's super cool to see and hold on and keep. Like, I'm keeping these. You never know. They might show up at a show one day. Who knows? Um, because this, they took the time to send me a card. And also, they used my creation. So, it is super fun. Thank you very much. Um, yes, we will have a mixed media retreat. Now, I did want to show you another card that I made last year with the same snow um, technique of putting the white down. And then this was so simple, guys. I just literally heat embossed it on the vellum. And then this, I'm going to come back one day and show you how to do this. This is our sparkle. Do you see this? And you... The unbelievable amount of sparkle on the bottom of this is just crazy good. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, oh, you know what I wanted to show you real quick? We do have a limited edition kit for sale right now. We don't have that many left. So since you guys were hanging around with me today, I wanted to show you some samples so you can actually see some cards that were made from the Mr. Frosty kit. Mr. Frosty's kit is a hundred dollar value and it's $50. So basically it's half off. Um, so here's one card here. It comes with this beautiful um, stencil. This is a card by Sarah. This is what Mr. Frosty looks like. And Sarah used him and it comes with paper and some extra dies and Sarah made a shaker. Here's another card showing using that stencil. However, you also get a piece of our new fabric paper. So if you're looking and thinking about buying our fabric paper, but you know, you're not ready yet. It comes with a piece of our of the, the fabric. I'm sorry, court fabric paper. So it's, you know, this you can see it in use right here. Then we have another beautiful card colored by Sarah, a slim line. So you see she used the same exact image for an A2 as well as a slim line. And look at all those crazy uh, layering of snowflakes. And then here's a card by Hijong. And she made, it's a very simple card, but it's also very pretty. Okay. And then we have another one by He Zhang, also a very simple but yet pretty card. Now she added red to it, um, which makes sense. So she, the palette that I chose for this kit is like blue, silver, white, opal, but He Zhang is Asian. So I'm not surprised that she chose red for this because that's their color for celebration and it's gorgeous. And then last but not least, here we have a card from, this is Michelle, and she used our um, full front A2 shaker die and the large snowflakes that come with the kits. So it's a really good deal of the, with the kit. It does have a lot of stuff in it. You get not only the whole stamp set, but you get the whole coordinating stamp set, which is, you know, as you know, does not happen very often. And you get a second die set where you get brand new um, miniature snowflakes. They're, I say miniature, but all of these snowflakes that you see right in here, this is from a, the second die set that's in that kit. Plus you get a jar of the sparkle and you also get another jar of, thank you, Jen. You also get another jar of um, paper glaze. No, is it paper glaze? Or is it, no, it's paper velvet, and it's called Nordic Lights. 
So it's super fun kit. We don't have that many left. And I just wanted to make sure I mentioned it to you guys. So that way, you know, if you're interested in it, you can um, pop it in your box when you go over there for the flash sale. All right. So guys, I'm not going to hang up my video yet, but it is over. However, we will be turning this into a YouTube channel video. So I'm going to quickly do a beginning and an ending. That way, um, Sarah can have those and she can just grab them when she's turning this live into a video. So I hope you have a great afternoon. I hope you learned something new other than Nicole's just always messy, right? But I will take a picture of this finished card and have it on the website as well as our community page. And if you're not part of our community, please feel free to join. We share a lot of inspiration. You can talk directly to me on there, all of the design team members, other people that are um, PFF fans. We share a lot. And we always put our videos and reels and things on there too. So have a good day. And I'll see you later. Okay, Jen, if you're listening, now I'm going to do just the beginning and the end uh, for, the, for the video. Hi guys, Nicole Peterson here. I'm here today to show you some new mixed media techniques along with some new and older product, which I'm always super happy to use older product with new product. I feel like that's my... My responsibility as a designer and owner of Picket Fence is to always show you how to use what you have with what's coming out and how you take all those things together and mix them up in your stash and see what you have and inspire you. So here we go. I'm going to be making this card today and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now I'm going to do an ending, Sarah. All right, guys. Well, thank you for spending time with me today. I certainly hope you learned some new things. I know that we did a lot of mixed media and we talked about the different types of mixed media products that we sell at PFS. Just to let you know, I am the, um, the, the chemist, the cook, whatever you want to call it, the, the, um, the mad scientist <laughs> who does create all the different formulas for our mixed media products. They are first the formulas created in my studio at my house and then everything is brought to we have a little lab and then at our lab they make all the products and they put them together and my sister-in-law is actually the one who mixes by hand. She uses a mixer like a mixer but it's very much more it's like 75% by hand and she can use the mixer a little bit but you can't mix it too much so she just uses it a little bit so we say by hand so marty mixes all of our mixed media products by hand and jars them seals them and then they go to the warehouse to be mailed out so all right i hope you learned something new today and i'll see you around now i'm hanging up jim <laughs>